Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Clarity Fitness Gym Turn presentation, our final presentation for Tevin here. We are super excited to have you guys today, and I am the owner and founder of Clarity Fitness, so I've had the blessing and opportunity of meeting and getting to know Tevin. He has been absolutely phenomenal, and we are so excited that he is finishing off his presentation and his time here at Clarity Strong with this amazing breakthrough of his presentation, Movement is Possible. Uh, I wanted to ultimately kick things to Caleb, who has been his mentor through this process. He's been absolutely phenomenal, and they've had a great time together. So without further ado, I will pass the baton to Caleb, and he can do Tevin's intro. Thank you so much, Abby. Um, as Abby just mentioned, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to work with Tevin. Um, I'm not quite sure who's learned more, though. I, I think... Uh, if I had to guess, probably myself. Um, he's been inspirational. Uh, he's an absolute powerhouse of a human being. And I, I honestly can't wait to, to, to see this culmination of what's been an awesome eight-week experience thus far. And I'm really just excited to see exactly what the future holds here. So stay tuned for an absolutely powerful message from an even more powerful human being. I am uh, truly honored by you guys' words. Uh, I'm blessed and I thank God for the opportunity to intern and I've learned so much within my short span here of about a month and a half to two months and I look forward to expanding and branching out and I'm going to use this internship and my time here as a springboard into my lifelong dream and my goal and my overall career. But without further ado, I would like to get started and present my presentation, Movement is Possible. I wanted to start off by giving everybody a little background or details about me. I wrote these words, foundation, crawling forward, walker, Walker Rowling and my first step. I was born November 2nd, 1991. I'm from Thompson, Georgia. And I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at the age of nine months. For those who don't know what cerebral palsy is, it's basically a condition where the cerebral co cortex or the part of the brain that controls or deals with movement, it, got damaged at birth. So generally, doctors gave my parents a diagnosis that me and my twin brother, who um, was also born along with me, wouldn't have a productive life. But as you guys can see from the pictures, fitness has been a part of my life. And I'm going to be presenting to you guys today why I believe and know, have come to know, that movement is possible. I want to start off by defining movement. Movement is the state of changing something or someone's position. Work, emphasis on work. Work is needed to produce the movement. And I want to present a video that is going to um, detail what movement means to me. So, breaking down the purpose. Why are we here today? Why is movement possible? Why are we here today? The purpose is to explain how movement affects the physical and, as and mental aspect of the human body. Movement comes from the, from the inside and it starts within the mind. Also, want to identify the benefits 
of movement specifically for the differently able community. We don't use the word disabled. It's not necessarily um, a word that we like to use in our community. And number three, and most importantly, we want to point out challenges facing the differently able community and provide solutions to help the differently able community to, um, to build a better community and help us all come together at large. So I want to break it down and I want to explain where movement begins. We have physical movement where all things consider in the body. You move your head, you pick up your leg, and the brain sends signals to the parts of the brain that tell us to raise an arm or lift a leg, deciding internally to learn the movement. There are physical and mental examples of movement. Physical examples include walking, running, rolling, or jumping. The mental aspect of movement occurs within the head. And you have scenarios such as reading a book, playing a board game, or studying a test. And then there's sometimes where we may need to rest, rest, because resting is even active. There are going to be days where we want to take a break. And it's important to take a break sometimes because who doesn't get tired? Who doesn't want to stay in bed and watch Netflix? And that's okay. Can't punish somebody all because they want to watch episodes of Game of Thrones or, um, or Girlfriends that's on Netflix now. <laughs> And most importantly, the forces that affect movement are the people, the community, the people around us, the situations and the environment that we grow up in. I grew up in a small town, but the great thing about my area and my experience is I had a great support system, a great family that instilled the importance of me living and wanting to have an active life. So movement is affected by your community and, and the people around you because they shape who we are along with our environment. Learning movement. Learning movement is also important. You learn movement by what you see. And I can attest to that because I started my journey when I was creating my YouTube channel back in 2012, I want to say, I necessarily didn't have the playbook to watch other people in my position train themselves or learn how to work out. So I had to watch other people and I learned movement visually. And then I was able to take what I could do and adapt it so that I could become that person that can empower and inspire other people. Auditory comes from what you hear. I remember growing up and I took psychological evaluations. And one thing that we would do is, one test, they would make us wear headphones and they were like, uh, whatever side the sound, you hear the sound, you raise your left hand, for example. So, Movement can be learned auditorily. And then there's tactile. Tactile is the system in the body that has to deal with your touch. We know a square has four sides. So when we grab a object with four points, we know it's a square. And same thing with a triangle. When you grab a triangle in your hand, you know it has three points. So that's how we define, we, we define movement. And then there's also the reaction to stimuli. For example, when everybody touches a stove and it's hot, you automatically take your hand back. And that's, what, and that's 
how we learn from the environment. It's like even when we touch the brush and we feel the bristles and we know that the, the brush is rough or sandpaper is rough, it's because it has to smooth out the wood and the edges. So these are just ways that people learn movement through their environment and through what we're taught through coaches and people. Why is movement a necessity? I have three reasons. Movement builds self-esteem. I can remember when I first started working out, I struggled with low self-esteem because I did not like the, the way my body looked. I did not like um, the simple fact that it was hard for me to carry various things or I would fall a lot and I just didn't like my statue as a person. But when I started to build my muscles and really build my body and really start to um, accomplish various goals within the weight room, that was able to empower me to set other goals and keep moving forward. So I started having a positive body self image of myself because I saw myself being able to do these things. And when I saw myself being able to do various movements and progress from one stage to another, I became expansive. I became expansive because I eventually was able to study various styles and various movements. So now I feel like I'm at a place where I can help other people so when I'm expanding my community and when I'm expanding my knowledge, then I can pass it down and we can all come together and strengthen ourselves. I want to share a story um, from my friend on Instagram. Her name is Freya. She can't read it, but she was basically telling me about her rehab journey and how she really wanted to, to give up and just, just quit because she was in an accident a long time ago and she was in recovery and she didn't, she didn't want to um, recover and, and she really had to fight physically and mentally. So it was a lot on her. But when she discovered my Instagram a couple of years ago, along with my other friend, Marcus, who's also rehabilitating this, the simple act of us speaking out and making a um, effort to better ourselves or try to live a comparable life in spite of what happened to us that empowered her too so she will she wanted me to um just enunciate and allow me to share that part of her story with her in the journey what We're going to shift down and we're going to play one of my favorite videos of all time. And it's called What Working Out Means to Me. And it's going to detail exactly how working out helped me. Now, I want to introduce a um, world champion bodybuilding couple. Their names are um, BJ Glaze and Wade Washington. And we're going to watch their video, and I believe their story is going to inspire you and really bring my point home to what mo how movement is possible. That video was um, shot in July of last year. A little update on Wade. He has um, also became a NASM certified trainer since then. So that video in itself shows you what happens when you have a support system and a legitimate team around you. And the simple fact that 
that community, they were able to build a community around them that supported them. That is my overwhelming example of why I, I believe in it. We'll always believe that movement is possible. So if we go to the next slide, although movement is possible, there are various obstacles and two main, two main points. I had three words, but I can combine two. There's technology and transportation, and you also have the underlying issue of support. I can remember growing up, growing up when I was younger, um, it was really hard for us to have to drive back and forth two and three hours for doctor's appointments and having various access to information as far as um, proper care for people in the differently able community. And when you live in a small town and when you don't have as many resources as bigger places, that does present a real challenge and that can that can limit your your choices when you don't have exactly enough information as to how to combat and attack problems. So I want to move forward and explain what I believe offer a solution that can be done. Number one, support groups like Wade and BJ had to where they could go and be able to work out and cultivate that community and reinvigorate and instill the power of movement in that community. I also propose or suggest that there be local outreach centers, I believe everything starts on the local level. People in the differently able community need to be able to have places where they can go, where they can um, access, or they can access information readily to help them. Because not everybody knows various doctors or physical therapy clinics but I feel like on the local level, if more information or more time was predicated to satisfying this community, I feel like it would combat a lot of, um, a lot of the things that I grew up seeing. And as I grow and as I mature, I hope to be a resounding voice as far as advocating for um, for more opportunities for people in my community so that we can see a higher success rate and increase the chances of movement being able to increase. I've come to the end of my presentation and I want to thank everybody that's taken time out to um, listen to what I have to say. I, I'm really glad that I got to do this because I've spoken on the importance of movement, the importance of having resources and advocating for people in my community and I just want to be a, um, a beacon of light for those that don't have or can't see the light. And it's, it's not easy as BJ stated in the video to do what I do or get up every day and deal with the physical and mental strain of just traveling or being in society and being 
pegged as different. But in reality, I'm going out on a limb here stating that it's important for all of us as people to understand different viewpoints and have a positive body and a positive self image within ourselves. But it all starts from within. So when we know and we come to understand who we are as people and what our purpose is, that is when the goal or the statement movement is possible is achieved. I want to thank everybody for their time and for their patience as I <laughs> struggle with Apple technology. Uh, you guys can follow me on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Buster the Strongman. And I want to thank Abby, Caleb, and everybody at Clarity. I want to thank all my trainers, all my coaches, and all of my friends that allow me to use their information so that I could put together the best presentation possible. And I'm truly thankful. See ya.